So when people are onboarded at Hurtigruten, and to be honest, they it, they will have a passion for sustainability if they're joining us realistically, kind of like when I was, I hadn't heard of this company before. And the first thing that jumped out at me is the, their sustainability practices. And it was something I knew I needed to be part of. So we start from a good place because hopefully it's somebody that's seeking it to be part of the team with us. But then we continuously give updates. It's always how we lead um, you know, our town halls, our OKRs, you know, we have five huge, big ones. One of them is sustainability, right? And being responsible. Welcome to the Sustainable Hospitality Podcast, where green practices meet profitable solutions. Join us as we uncover the latest trends in eco-friendly hospitality that not only safeguard our planet, but also drive down operating costs and boost revenue. Every week, we will bring you compelling conversations with industry leaders who are at the forefront of merging sustainability with economic success. Whether you're a hotelier, a resort manager, or a passionate traveler, this is your gateway to the future of sustainable hospitality. Tune in and let's explore how going green is good for both the earth and your bottom line. We're your hosts. Amy Wald and Kathy McGuire. Welcome back to the Sustainable Hospitality Podcast. We are so glad you're here. I'm Amy Wald, one of your hosts. And in this episode, we are delighted to have Carly Biggert, who is the VP of Sales and Marketing for Hooter Hurtigruten Cruise Lines. And Carly is um, has more than 20 years of experience in global roles across the telecom and travel experience at uh, travel industries born and raised close to Toronto Carly got her travel addiction at an early age when she went backpacking around Mexico with her family Carly joined Herta Gruten Group in 2019 with the responsibility of North American sales for both Herta Gruten Expeditions and Herta Gruten Norway brands managing a team of sales managers in both Canada and the US She's passionate about the brand's sustainability focus. She has helped improve Herta Gruten's position by forging new partnerships with ATTA, that's the Adventure Travel Trade Association, Tourism Cares, and Innovation Norway. With Herta Gruten, she has traveled all over the world, primarily showcasing its products, itineraries, and experiences to trade partners or representing the brand at various conferences and trade shows. And we're going to talk about some of her favorite itineraries a little bit later. But what you can expect in this episode is we're going to talk to her about how you balance the need to drive revenue with the importance of promoting sustainable practices. What some of the most effective ways to communicate your sustainability efforts to potential guests are, How do you engage and educate your sales team about sustainability? And how do you measure all of these efforts to know what's working? Also, we're going to touch on what advice she would give other sales and marketing professionals in the hospitality and tourism industry who want to start incorporating sustainability into their strategies but are unsure where to start. And of course, we are going to touch on what the what the current climate is for you know the tourism industry um the united states tourism organization association uh they just had their meeting in singapore and she's going to tell us all about that but enough of me talking carly thank you for joining us today how are you i'm wonderful and thank you so much for having me today amy it's great to be here Absolutely. I'm really excited. I spent a few years working in cruise ships, so um, I can't wait to talk to you about that. It's it's a whole country and culture and world of its own. And then also, of course, I love Canadians and you're from Toronto. So um, I love that. And so, gosh, Carly, did you ever think you would work on cruise ships? What did that journey look like? Tell us all about it. <clears throat> So I definitely didn't see myself working in cruise ships. Uh, As you mentioned, I've always had a passion for travel. I grew up in telecom and I loved the excitement of telecom. But 
I got the opportunity uh, to work at Herta Gruten. Uh, a colleague had reached out to me and it was a tricky one to say. As you know, I always say you can't say it. There's no way to say it wrong. It's, uh, it means fast routes. Uh, and as I learned more about the organization and how they connected 34 communities, you know, along the coastline of Norway 131 years ago now, and that they lead with sustainability, it was a company I just knew I needed to learn more about. And truly, that's what attracted me to the company. And I had never stepped foot on a cruise ship before. Um, and I don't know that I was, it was something that I was intrigued to do but from the moment that i that i've stepped foot on our our cruise ships i couldn't be more proud of how we enable guests to immerse themselves and engage with norway um and and then again our our sustainability approach and practices and and we still have a lot to learn and a long way to go but it is something that every single person within hergruten every single day strives towards and it's just part it's part of our dna it's part of our our practice and all of that is really what attracted me to hertigroot in the travel industry and i think once you're in the travel industry there's no going back it's such a wonderful place to be yes especially if you have that bug right you're yeah. just you're going to find a way to wiggle yourself in but i find that interesting you you truly felt drawn to work for them because of their values and what they stood for yeah. So let's talk about their rich history. Um, you know, give us a little bit of that background. 130 years. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to hear all about that. Yeah. So it was really Richard with who started it all off. He understood it's that there needed to be a way to connect to these communities, to get them communications, to get them mail, to get them emergency services, right? And so it is literally the lifeline of Norway. These ships that go up and down the coast, I mean, they run 365 days a year. So there's vehicle, there's cargo, there's people, and there's tourists that get to experience travel like a local. That is it's so incredible. I, I didn't realize that. I have not been fortunate enough yet to go to Norway. It is on my list. Of course, one of these cruises is on my bucket list. So that is so fascinating, just how a different culture, you know, interacts with our natural world um, and what resources they provide to them, depending on where they are. Yes. So Carly, gosh, VP of sales and marketing, that is a title that is going to keep you busy, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the competitive world of tourism and then of cruise lines, because there are so many cruise lines offering so many different products. So tell us about um, what is that offering? How is it different than some of the other you know, cruise lines out there? And I think it's probably a, a, more different than most right? Yeah. So again, it's, there's very few places in the world. Um, Greenland has it as well, but it's not as established as the Norwegian coastline is again with these 34 ports of call that we are visiting. So there's, there's the northbound um, stretch southbound and round trip that you can do. So again, it's truly unique and people need to understand it that you are getting to see Norway. I mean, when you think of Norway and even you see artwork or postcards, the our ships are on those. Like they are part of the community. So if you are looking for to truly see a country in its natural way and walk in the footsteps of a local, going on our original Norwegian Coastal Express is absolutely the experience you're looking for. We also understand, particularly in North America, where it's the biggest cruising market in the world, and there's a lot of preconceived notions of how you should be cruising. We also have options with our signature series along the coast. That's a more premium product, but it's more traditional cruising style. So we still connect the coast with moving cargo, although those on board may not know that. But we want to make sure we're, we're still, you know, um, 
delivering essentials, but now you get longer time in port and it's a bit more of a traditional cruising experience, much uh, very elevated. So we, it's our flagship Norwegian coastal kitchen on all of our ships, over 80% of our food is locally sourced. So when we are stopping in port, we are literally replenishing from, you know, the farms, from the you know, the person that we get our eggs from, from the cheese, the, the cheese producers. So incredibly focused. Also, everything that we do on ship is very sustainable and locally focused. And we want to make sure that the communities want us there as well. So one of the ports that we went into in October, they literally lit off fireworks for us coming into port with our new signature series of product because that port hadn't been visited in 50 years and they wanted to welcome us in a really special way, right? So it's a very magical experience. And with the culture of Norway as well, it is very, um, out, no matter the weather, no matter the season, you are outdoors and you are kind of one with nature and one with the lands. And you can't help that adopt, but adopt that when you're traveling with us to Norway. So it's, uh, as you started off by saying, it is very different than other cruising experiences. Uh, you have me so inspired. <laughs> You know, I, I know a little bit about Hurtigruten and I know their mm -hmm. sustainability position and DNA, but that is such an interesting um, adoption and a no brainer really to source your products from the ports of call that you're going mm -hmm. to. You know, that was one of the things that stood out to me the most when I worked on ships. And I know that they've come a long way um in in the world of sustainability and thinking about communities but we would port in these different areas and i would look around and just wonder do they want us here are we doing right by them is this enhancing their livelihoods mm -hmm. and that is such a special way to make that connection to give your guests authentic experience and to make sure that the communities are benefiting from you being there. I love that. Yeah. So let's get into what your role is um, and sales and marketing. You know, how do you balance the need to drive revenue and mm -hmm. get those bookings with the importance of the sustainability practices that, that you're taking on? Yeah. So I feel like I get asked that question off often and I don't feel like it's a balance for us. Not when it's, it is a part of what we do every single day. And I know that it's hard from a consumer perspective. They don't want to pay more, right. For sustainability, but honestly, it, it costs more to get there, right? Removing, we were the first to remove heavy fuels. We were the first to remove single use plastics. We are the first to announce a net um, zero, uh, net zero emissions or um, emission free ship. We were the first to do hybrid electric. All of that comes at a cost. So yes, our price tag is a little bit more, but we know the consumer today, some will, but generally speaking, won't pay more for it, but we need to deliver on authenticity, the value of our product. And I do think that that stands alone. And I do think Norway as a destination stands alone as well. So we'll continue to communicate it. And we, we try, it depends on the audiences we're communicating uh, to, but when it's, when it's the consumer, it's really about responsible travel. Are we protecting the places that we're going? And then the hope is to, once they come off of being on the experience, they come back and go, okay, I actually want to change things in my life, right? Whether it's, you know, eliminating plastics from your house. Like, and, and if that, if they come back wanting to do that, then we've, we've done our job to some degree. There's so much more to do, but so for us, it's about continuing to keep sustainability at the, the DNA and the forefront of everything that we do and help that consumer, when we get them on board, really experience the product and why it's so important to protect the seas, the lands, the wildlife, the communities that we're going to. You know, it's interesting. You talk about the willingness to pay for a guest. And, and I agree, you know, none of us go out there and say, I want to spend more money 
than I have or than I had prepared to spend. But I think there is starting to become a shift that if you have, if that traveler doesn't already have it in, in their DNA mm -hmm. and they've been converted, I think the consideration to pay a little bit more because you realize what a better experience you get, they are willing to, it's, at least I feel I, I'm hopeful it's moving in that direction. I agree. Um, and I think that, I think it's the, the experiencing it, right? Once they experience it, they okay, now I want to seek that out a little bit more, right? So, and we had this conversation, I was at a signature conference and we had an impact round table and it was with some of um, the suppliers very focused on uh, impact and responsible travel and the travel advisors that really care about that themselves as well. And that conversation was about how do we have the conversation with the consumer, right? And some will seek us out. So some will seek us out and say, I have never considered cruising before. I now understand what you do. I now want to cruise with you because of your practices. So I think there's, it's, you know, it's that, that cycle that we always have to go through and something new and education. And there's so much education out there, but also there's, there's a lot of greenwashing out there as well. Right. And that makes it a challenge and it makes it a challenge for the consumers um, to understand as well. So you you talk about greenwashing. Let's let's touch on that a little bit. So we know that you're you know this is a, in it, your DNA and mm -hmm. it's really embedded in your offering. But how do you balance? Um, maybe not exaggerating your message or worried about an area that you're still working on. How do you tackle that really sensitive and fine line? Some people wouldn't call it a fine line, but it can be between talking authentically about what you're doing and wanting people to get on board with it and, and understand that it is a journey. So three years ago, we released our first ESG report. And that was, that was scary because you got the good and the bad with it, right? We reported on everything. So we're doing, um, we're science-based targets, right? We're aligning to the SGGs. We're looking at several different of the frameworks. And, and now, so we just released our third report. What I love this year is it was part of our annual report. It wasn't released separately because it shouldn't be separate. It's not this thing you do on the side. It's not a tick box, right? It is part of how you are running your organization. And so we released it all together. And what I've seen over the three years is we've keep adding different data points. And a lot of the time we're adding them for the first time. We have no idea if they're good or they're bad. We only know that we need to improve upon them, right? So, and this is where, you know what? We'll all make mistakes. Just own your mistakes, right? It, own it. Don't try to gloss over it or try to cover it up because, first of all, we're only human. There is no playbook for this, right? Which is why it's so important for us to come together as an industry. And you mentioned USTO, USTOA and the sustainability um, summit. Sustainability is responsibility summit. We are just at together. And it's where tourism boards and DMCs and cruise lines and tour operators came together and we're all at different places, right? And that's okay. The fact that we're all at the table is the most important thing. And we're all there to help each other, no matter where, if you're just starting out and you don't know where to go, which is a ton of the time, lucky for us, we have had a great path for so many different, um, there's so many different things to tackle. Oh my goodness. Um, but as long as you're there and you are focused on doing the right thing, we can move this forward together. Yeah. That's, you know, that, that tends to be a reoccurring theme is don't become paralyzed by perfection start yep. somewhere, start talking about your vision and your goals for your organization. And then you start bringing your previous, you know, your, your current loyal guests on that journey with you, hopefully converting them. Yep. They now implement into their lives and, and attracting 
that new consumer that is really looking to align those values. So important. So how do you, um, you, you know, how do you engage and educate your sales team and your staff and, and the importance of, I mean, you, I know you mentioned that it's really part of everyone's DNA, but is there ever an instance where there's kind of a newbie on board and you need to make sure that everybody is up to speed? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, one of our core values is we care, right? So um, that, and obviously everyone goes through training and they learn the core values and go through the sustainability and the sustainability report is like 130 pages. So we also try to make it more approachable for everybody, right? To have um, snippets. I think there's different ways of talking about it and understanding it as well. What is great within the organization is we do have a sustainability um, team or, and our lead is actually, she's lead for sustainability, but she's also lead for organizational development, which I think is critically important, right? And that's newer that we've done that. And I love it because that means that sustainability isn't this standalone thing, right? It is in the organizational development, how we're developing our organization, which also means our people, because you don't have an organization without people, right? So when people are onboarded at Hurtigruten, to be honest, they they will have a passion for sustainability if they're joining us, realistically, kind of like when I was, I hadn't heard of this company before. And the first thing that jumped out at me is the their sustainability practices. And it was something I knew I needed to be part of. So we start from a good place because hopefully it's somebody that's seeking it to be part of the team with us. But then we continuously give updates. It's always how we lead, um, you know, our town halls, our OKRs. You know, we have five huge, big ones. One of them is sustainability, right? And being responsible. Okay. So, right. So it is, um, it's a big part of what we do. So you feel, you get it by osmosis, whether you want it or not. <laughs> but of course, everybody does. And then we just ensure that we're continuing to give any single update. So on our C0 project or zero emission ship, as an example, we're always looking for snippets, of, uh, updates and information where we're at because we're in the research phase as to how to do that today, right? Because there's a ton of things to consider. The battery size that we need, for an example, isn't developed yet. So how do we get to that development? But we have all that information that we're sharing um, across all parts of the organization because everybody, it's important to everyone and everyone wants to know. That's amazing. And it's just more proof that not only are travelers looking for organizations that align with their values, but so are employees. And it is yeah. really an ability to turn a an employee from just a job, just checking a box to thinking about, about this as a long-term career and a, and a lifetime employee, hopefully, or a lot of their life. Um, so how let's let's talk about your day to day your marketing sales and marketing mm -hmm. and so how are you how do you decide what sustainability initiatives uh that you talk to mm -hmm. the guests about and how you market those and what platforms you you know i know you can't go into all of it but what are some of the highlights yeah. So I think we start with, well, first of all, we always start with the destination, right? We start with Norway. And to be honest, Norway is fairly far along, right? With uh, their sustainability practices and what they're, they're putting in place as a country. And then you also have the EU that is putting a lot of things into place, especially around, you know, anti-greenwashing, right? And because we're a European country, we're adhering to those as well. So a lot of things come naturally and this should be natural. So you don't have to use the word sustainability. I would even garner a guess that throws people off a lot. I mean, we've been using ecotourism and different things, but the way we talk about it, so we start with Norway and why you want to go with Norway. And a lot of it is sustainability, like see nature in its natural form, right? See wildlife naturally, see how you, the right way to interact with a community. Don't descend like tens of thousands of people on it that are going to buy tchotchke and, you know, leave again and not take more than that with them. So it's woven into from social media to our flights, everything that we do, because 
it is a natural, authentic, um, responsible way to be traveling and seeing a nation and what they are doing. And, you know, why the culture, preserving the cultures are so important, why telling the hist historical stories are so important. We are really about education. We have experienced teams on board that are that are have lectures, you know, every single day if you choose to go see them. But those stories, and we're really pushing for the ships, which I just found out this morning is happening, to share like videos and images from the ships of what is truly happening on board. I never want to see a like photo shoot with talent in Norway. We you don't need that. It is, you know, it's see it in its its natural beauty and the way local tra local travelers are seeing it as well and by default because we offer it tourists that are going to see it so i feel like it's not hard if we over force talking about sustainability right i think that that's tricky we try to weave it into all that we do we've done sustainability specific webinars and I think that it's almost better to be weaving in, share the message that we are, you know, 80, over 80% 80 of our food on board is locally sourced. Share the message that we don't use um, single use plastics, right? We, we need to just continue sharing those messages in every day, you know, what we do. And even one of our big uh, selling points is we have a Northern Lights Promise. If you go between you know, September 20th and March 31st with us round trip and don't see the Northern Lights, we send you back for free. But the message around the Northern Lights with us is wh why come to see it with Hurtigruten? Number one, Norway is under the Aurora Oval and, you know, it's at the maximum beauty right now. Um, but on ship, you can get out of light pollution, right? You can get out of, uh, get out of cloud cover and you can see them in this really natural way. So it, it, you mentioned a little bit about, you know, being authentic, not really leading with sustainability, but for somebody sitting in your shoes for, let's say, a company that this hasn't been part of their DNA mm -hmm. uh, and they're really just starting to dig their heels in, yep. how, how do you think that mesh message starts to get filtered out? What does that look yeah. like? Yeah. I think that first you need to be really authentic, right? You need to be really authentic. You need to be really truthful. Have resources. We have resources and dedicated pages on our website. So do that as well. I would also say you need to get the message out, but join with the community. Find your, I mean, I've used US QA as the industry coming together. Find communities where you can come together and have like dis like discussions and learn what others are doing that are that is resonating. Right. I've talked to partners before about because there's no, you know, standard certification or say like you can't just put a green like leaf. On. Like, how do you how do you say you could put a green life leaf on this cruise to say it's eco friendly and not others? But do you do that and then click? Um, click on a box to learn more about what that, um, whether it's a, a hotel or a cruise ship company or a DMC or a, or a tourism board to learn more about what they're doing. So I think coming together as an industry and getting ideas from industry, I think is critically important. And it doesn't have to be hotel to hotel. I think we all learn a lot from each other. Um, and then you can also do, uh, you can do it in your, in your newsletters that you're going out, always include, just always have it there as a constant right? Just, you know, what's new with us and the things that we're trying to work on, because I think it's about the effort and the, fo it's not where you're at, it's your intention. And I think in sharing the intention goes a long way. And I think that's a really important point that I think sometimes, because at least here in the United States, we're kind of in it, we're still in its infancy. And when we talk about ecotourism, eco-friendly travel, sustainability, I think people naturally associate with, okay, well, that has to be on the coast or that has to be in a really forested area. And you can find culture, uniqueness, all of those things that tie into sustainability mm -hmm. anywhere you're at. It's yeah. just about stopping to start to learn about those places and be intentional and learn about what, what problems they have and what 
what history they have. So I think that that was a really important point you made. So let's go back really quick. I know we, we've mentioned it a couple of times, but for those listeners out there that aren't familiar with the USTOA, yes. um, and let's talk about really quick. They just had a meeting, how mm -hmm. that could be of resource to other organizations out there that are looking for that community to learn and grow from when it comes to sustainability. Yeah. So the United States Tour Operators Association, I feel has really led, they just did their third sustainability is responsibility uh, summit and have really gone to their network to ask everyone to, to almost take a pledge um, for sustainability, right, as a responsibility to their organization and to the places that they travel. And so for me, it's so I'm, I've been honored that I've been um, able to be part of it. But it's amazing that all of us can be in a room, as I mentioned, it's from tourist operators to DMCs to cruise companies to the tour operators, but we're all there to learn from each other as different topics. So we talked about certification versus accreditation to certify, to not certify, because that is debilitating if you start to talk about that, right? We talked about partnerships and what do partnerships mean and, and what does success look like and what is the outcome that you're looking for? And we talked about the business case for sustainability, right? So it was, and all of us are at all different levels, but we learned so much from each other. And literally every day we were writing postcards back to ourselves on the key things we wanted to go back and do. And I will tell you, they will hold us accountable to that and do check-ins to see where we're at. Do we need help? What resources do you need? And so they're building this from scratch too, but that's the importance of the industry coming together, right? For us to show our responsibility to these lands that we want to protect so that people can go back to them so that they will be there to go back. And as those consumers go there, they come back with even more of a sense of, oh my gosh, I now understand why it's so important to protect where we're traveling to. And that's such a great resource because, like you said, we this has to be a collaborative movement. Yes. Uh, but what I always mention is, but that doesn't mean that you can't carve out your unique value proposition yep. and use sustainability to try to attract more guests. It's just a way, I think, to enhance your brand in yep. this really crowded space, right? Yep. Uh, and we'll make sure that we link that along with all the other good stuff you're talking about. But so if there are organizations out there that don't know about USTOA, that um, they can find them and they can hunt down those resources and hopefully, you know, get involved. So you did mention, sorry, I was just going to say, you did mention in the beginning as well, the ATTA, the Adventure Trade Travel Association. We work a ton with uh, Innovation Norway or Visit Norway, your the tourist boards of the destinations you're going to, as well as uh, tourism care. So there's there's several out there that, and we all kind of gravitate together, right? And being able to move these together. So a Tourism Cares is building out meaningful travel maps, right? Into different destinations where um, you're going to ensure uh, the suppliers that you're engaging with or the experiences are truly sustainable and giving back to the economies in which they're in. Like, there's so many good things that are going on. I know I talked just because I just came back from Singapore, but there's fantastic resources out there for sure. There, there really are. And that's a great point that you are not alone. Uh, there, there are tons of great resources that can get you started or help you to deepen the commitments that you've already made. And that brings me to a question. Okay. So for a company that is really in bed with sustainability and it is, it is part of your DNA, how do you start to deepen commitments? Is there a methodology or think about adopting additional practices. What does that look like? Yeah, I mean, this is where we are guiding star are kind of the targets that we've set for ourselves, right? But that doesn't mean that that's cast in stone, right? And it is, so this year, a good example is we really focused in on food waste, right? That's, that's 
it's a huge one, particularly with cruise ships. And so we've also, we've started this edible food waste reduction. So we will come, when we come into, into one of our ports, we actually bought um, compost machines that 24 hours later turns it into compost that we actually then move to one of the farms that they fertilize with that, which we then get our supplies from. Right. So we're focused on reducing. So we're, we're um, uh, calculating the grams of food waste and we've been able to get that down. But then what is it that you're actually doing with that waste? So that's a good example of getting deeper. Right. <laughs> like that's getting deeper and contributing to, you know, circular economy as well. Right. Which is um, which is an ideal goal. But that's a good example of us being like, we need to do more. Like we used smaller plates, right? And we did all these different things to reduce um, food waste. But this is our next step that we just recently actually announced. I, I love that because I think, you know, this the word sustainability, if you haven't started on your journey, it's just like, oh my gosh, where do I start? And I think there's this misconception that you have to, you know, continue to add all these things. Um, there has to be this big, long list, but really it's about how impactful are you with the implementations or the projects that you are putting into place? So even if you are starting with one, it's not a one and done, the box is no. checked. How can you make sure that you are continuing to deepen that commitment and eventually reaching, like you're saying, um, a, a circular economy model mm -hmm. that is doing good, closing the loop on all of this. So that's, I think, a reminder to the audience that um, start with something and make sure that you are doing it as well and deep as you can. And then and then look to add on, you know, don't try to do everything. Yeah. That so, all right. So as the younger generations are up and coming, you know, when I was, on cruise ships, it was really, it was those baby boomers. It was definitely a segment of the market that loved mm -hmm. to cruise. And that has changed yeah. drastically. So millennials, Gen Zs, um, you know, and these younger generations, how are you tailoring itineraries or your sales and marketing and your messaging to attract them? So for us, we are still very that 55 to 70, okay. right? Because they they need time for the length of our itineraries and, and money to go, right? We are seeing more interest in either skip gen or multi-gen travel as well. But again, for us, it is in part the destination, right? This whole con concept of cool cationing and avoiding like high peak, right? Like Norway... Well, with us, but also just Norway as a destination, you can go to all year and have a completely different experience. So we go there 365 days a year. We've got seven ships along the coast for the original. And then we have the Troll Fjord that does our premium signature series experience, which also goes to, to uh, Svalbard. But with that, like Norway itself lends itself to what millennials are looking for as an experience, right? Like that is altering because it, it's altering from the baby boomers. So we haven't, I think it's just what we are doing is almost even resonating more with them, right? So we actually haven't altered a ton just because our core really is still that 55 to 70, but we are trying to find uh, different ways and different places, um, different places to find them. So it's, I would say we haven't altered a ton just because I think that both the destination and our sustainability approach, I find they actually seek us out yeah. uh, a little bit. And I, I feel we could probably do more as well, but uh, we do cast a, a wide, a wide net, but still tend to get the older generation that has more time, more time to travel to Norway. And that makes complete sense. But that actually kind of flips the theory on its head that instead of you needing to go after them, they're seeking you out because yep. it is resonating with them. Yep. And I can tell you, I'm not 55 yet, but you know, it, <laughs> it resonates with me. It's definitely yeah. something that's on my bucket list and I'm, I'm not of that age group. Um, so 
All right. So let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk about the itineraries. I know you have yeah. some of your favorites. Yes. What's about those? What are really unique and special about them? And make that will make everybody, as soon as this podcast is over, buy their their trip um, on Herdegruten this year. Yeah. So this one is actually really hard for me. So my my <laughs> favorite is our signature series, the North Cape Line. It starts in Oslo. So you get into Oslo, which is just so beautiful. You see the beautiful opera house and then you see our ship sitting there. And it's just, for me, it's definitely a moment of pride, but sailing out of Oslo is unbelievable. You get into Christians and you get to go to the South Cape. So the southernmost point of Norway, and then you go up the coast. Lofoten is just, I literally walked up the Sherpa trail steps, sat and absorbed the view of Lofoten when we were there. I loved it. And then you get to go North, I, the North Cape, which is the northernmost point of um, mainland Europe is just, is so special. So I get to do in this itinerary, I get to do the entire, almost the entire coastline of Norway. And with the signature series, like our roast, which is our flagship um, fine dining the experience and the service and they there's a wine pairing you can choose as well is just unbelievable and we've got you know we've got mixologists on board that teach you about the local gins and aquavits and do these like really special cocktails so it is a fabulous experience and that ship actually does the norwegian coastline and svalbard in the uh in this well summer may uh through september and svalbard is it's 800 miles from the north pole it's an extremely special place but a place that is absolutely being affected by climate change right so also very very special and so that's our signature series and then you know, whenever I can hop on the Norwegian Coastal Express that's connecting those 34 communities and just I love sitting in the bakery and watching the locals and they're on and they're, you know, knitting and they're doing their thing. And you're just like, I can't believe I get to be part of this. I, and I have that feeling every time that I'm on ship. It's just it's amazing. I I don't know. It's there's a word that they use in Norway called friluftsliv, which is really about kind of being one act, outdoor activity, but being one with the land. And I kind of mentioned it before. And if you let Norway in, which really should be your reason for going there, it can be a life changing experience. Genuinely, it sounds like it. it, it <laughs> Yeah, it really does. I can feel like how heartfelt and how much it touches you. And that I think is what is really special about cruise travel. You see the landscape in such a different perspective. Mm -hmm. When uh, I was on ships and we would go to Alaska, that's how oh. I felt. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, you, you made a really important point, which is why it is so important that we are digging in and we are making these changes, although they seem difficult and they can add a little bit of cost, um, mm -hmm. you know, capital expenditure, because these places are not going to be around if we do not. And, and you know, you mentioned something similar to that before we started recording, um, but just how important it is that we protect these places, don't you feel? Yeah, absolutely. I think when you go and you experience it, I mean, the fjords and the mountains and the landscape and the Sami culture and the, you know, and you go and then you, you take it home a little bit with you, right? You go, I understand why we need to protect the places that we travel to. And you come home and you realize you need to protect home too. You want, you know, our organic people choose organic because they want to protect their bodies, right? We, and the health of their bodies, we need to protect the health of, you know, wildlife communities, seas and lands. Absolutely. And I think um, when you are in touch with those communities, it, it really hits home. Mm -hmm. that it's, it is our responsibility, no matter how, regardless of how far away we are, um, it's all one and the same and it's all interconnected. So, all right, I'm sure you've got things to do today. So let's, <laughs> let's wrap up. What, what do you, what inspires you and gives you hope about the future and sustainability um, 
in in just in general and in the world of cruising. Yeah. So I get inspired when I'm with like-minded people, right? Who truly care. And in this industry, there are so many of those. We don't all know what we're doing all the time and we do misstep and we do, you know, but the fact that we're there to catch each other fall or to propel us forward is so inspiring to me. And then part of that and this doesn't always happen where I, in my work life, which I feel is, should be synonymous really with my personal life, but I get to bring that into my personal life, right? And the passion. And I do, I just, maybe I'm too trusting, but I do trust that, you know, we will do the right thing. And it's hard because people, to your point before, there's competing priorities. Profitability is a really big one, right? You've got a lot of big cruise ships in the Caribbean that is cheap and cheerful and profitability is the focus, right? And you mentioned it before, North America, the U.S. has a long way to go, I think, with um, with what we need to do and how we need to protect. But I think people do want to do the right thing. And I'm, and I am motivated by that. I, I agree with you a hundred percent. I think when people know what we're up against um, and you can touch them emotionally, they they want to do that right thing. No one wants to not. Everybody has a love for some kind of nature, um, you know, at some level. So yeah. Carly, thank you so much for spending your, your morning with us. Uh, I know you're busy. Do, are you off to a a cruise anytime soon or are you land-based for a while? I am so excited. I actually just finished the last of my travel two days ago until the middle of August. So I am, I am cottage bound. I am very excited. So thank you, Amy. I couldn't, honestly, this was absolutely wonderful. Thanks oh, for having me. You're so kind. It was wonderful to meet you. It was wonderful to have this conversation. I can't wait to share it with our audience. And I hope that they um, are inspired to go take a cruise with you. Enjoy your summer and all that that um, has in store for you. Everyone, thank you so much for joining us again. We can't do this without your support. So we lead with you to like and subscribe to our newsletter. We will drop a link in the show notes so you can get those tips, those actionable steps and resources that you need to start your journey, um, those snippets from our favorite ep episodes, and some of those really cool, innovative, and sustainable products that you're looking for. So I'm Amy, one of your hosts. I can't wait to see you again on the next episode. Have a great day, everyone. We want to thank you for tuning back into the Sustainable Hospitality Podcast. Keep the conversation going and visit the contact page at greenluxinc.com and sign up for our monthly newsletter, where we will bring you the latest developments and breaking news in sustainable hospitality and tourism. That's www.green.com. L-U-X-E-I-N-C.com. And if you're ready to start your sustainability journey and would like some help on knowing what that could look like, book a complimentary call with us today. Until our next episode, remember, sustainability is your ticket to a healthier planet and a healthier bottom line. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave us a review.